Okay, hello, and welcome to Mythophiles, the show where we talk about all kinds of different stories. I am Duncan Gale, coming to you live from my place where I have all of my gifts that I've already purchased and wrapped. I'm really ahead here two weeks before Christmas this year, so... I've uh, I'm totally on the ball here. So I am Duncan Gale, and I am joined by my co-host Cody Decker in what I think is one of the end scenes in Fargo. Uh, yeah, looks like it. Looks like it. Yeah. So um, today we are going to be covering the uh, new holiday movie Violent Night. So this movie is uh, out in theaters right now, and uh, yeah. So. We're going to be reviewing it and letting you know if it is uh, something worth seeing. So, Violent Night. Um, I guess we'll just I guess we'll just get into it. Um, yeah, um, I it. saw the uh, the trailers for it. And like, there's, there's, oh, like okay, so it's like Die Hard and Christmas, and uh, right. an actual Die Hard Christmas movie, not like Die Hard. And um, yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I just initially, I, 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 it was more in depth than I thought it was going to be as far as like story. I really mm-hmm. thought Santa is just going to show up and fight people. Right, right. Yeah. Um, basically, the first time I got any awareness of, of this movie at all was just a couple of weeks ago. I think it was when I went to see Wakanda Forever. And as I was leaving the theater, I saw a poster with david harbour dressed up like santa claus uh yeah bloodied up and it said violent night and i was like okay i'm in uh yeah I, that's all i need <laughs> yeah <laughs> there were part like when the trailer first started i was like ah uh, they're gonna be some it's gonna be some dumb cr-. and then like 30 seconds and i'm like i'm on board whatever this is it's gonna be fun yeah 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 no i didn't even watch the trailer beforehand yeah i actually didn't know anything about just the poster what the actual plot what's that just the poster got you yeah just the poster that's all i needed yeah yeah i didn't know anything about the plot i just thought okay it's david harbour is santa kicking ass (laughs) that's it that's all i need going into the movie so yeah yeah i went into this movie uh unusually um fresh and 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 blank uh which 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 was a good experience i think mm-hmm. so so anyway uh yeah violent night that's that's the movie we're we're talking about today and so yeah this is a movie um yeah that stars david harbour uh who you probably know uh if if you watch stranger things he's the he i, I think he's the sheriff on stranger things he's also he also plays the uh red guardian in uh in that recent black widow movie so those are probably the two most well-known things he has done before this um i uh i've never seen stranger things but for uh, some reason i'm rooting for this guy as an actor like i saw he was in red guardians like ah you could have been in a good marvel movie or or like you could (laughs) have you know you were you know it's like ben affleck was in daredevil and you're like ah right sorry you missed yeah yeah black widow was was not was not one of the best marvel movies but he was he was good in the movie i thought yeah um but uh but yeah so david harbour is the is the main guy and and it's funny because yeah i mean when i first saw that image i mean he's definitely dressed up like santa claus but i was actually a little surprised to find out oh no he actually is playing (laughs) santa claus and He's a very he's a very sort of unlikely Santa Claus. I mean, even even in this movie, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm I mean he does well in the role, but whenever you see him, you never quite think, oh, this is the real Santa Claus. It's more like, well, yeah, this is a guy that's dressed up like Santa Claus. Uh, yeah, it's, and it, yeah. there's it, I think it, this plays with a lot of other Christmas movies, and I think yeah. they kind of play with. I mean, it's like, oh, is this like the Santa Claus in which? Right, you, right. So <laughs> there's there's a lot of movies that it references and plays with, and um, I was I was impressed by you know because they like they give you hints at his past life, and it's like that's cool, and they they don't give you like a big answer, I guess, but you yeah. are like you can piece together, and there's like a couple of ways this could have happened. Right, 
Yeah, yeah. And since since you uh, bring that up, yeah, I, yeah, I'll just say, you know, in terms of my general kind of philosophy perspective on Christmas movies, I mean, there's a lot of great Christmas movies out there that deal with a lot of different themes. But for me, the real Christmas movies are the ones that deal directly with Santa in some way. Mm. OK, I'm talking about Miracle on 34th Street. I'm talking about the Santa Claus, as you mentioned. I'm talking about Ernest Saves Christmas, Fred Claus. You know, these are these are the real Christmas movies, the ones that actually portray Santa Claus in some way. OK, uh, you know, all that other stuff about family getting together. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. That's fine. But Santa Claus, he's he's the real deal. OK, mm. and so and so this is this is one one such movie so that's already something in its favor uh, yeah that's uh my my thing is it has to at least deal with something involving directly with christmas so yes so mm -hmm. jingle all the way is an arnold movie and there's no. just a scene at a warehouse where he fights a bunch of santa clauses right right that qualifies as christmas and i think we're, hey there's a <laughs> there's a dog um oh yeah 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 my dog is probably flashing in and out uh yeah right now uh but uh yeah here's uh here's mickey hi mickey <laughs> nice to see you <laughs> uh so i uh i don't have uh as because i'm not really into christmas movies but like mm -hmm. you have to uh, you can't just take place at the same time that's i think we agree there yeah like iron yeah. man so, 3 yeah, that's... is not mm -hmm. a christmas movie Right. Yeah, this is this is actually I, I mean, you you are you're totally reading my mind here because, yeah, I've been watching a lot of Christmas movies during this season and I've I've started to sort of formulate, yeah, some rules for what actually constitutes a Christmas movie. And and I have come to the conclusion that, yeah, there are so many Christmas movies out there that, yeah, I mean, we need to kind of tighten things up here. And just because a movie takes place during Christmas does not necessarily make it a Christmas movie. There needs to be additional thematic Christmas-related content in the movie in order for it to be a Christmas movie. So, sorry, that disqualifies Die Hard. And, yes, painfully for me, yes, that also disqualifies Iron Man 3. <laughs> um, there are certain other movies yeah that i haven't quite decided whether they are christmas movies or not they're kind of borderline which would be uh gremlins um shazam which are also two movies that take place during christmas and they might yeah i think they might come a little bit cr closer to being christmas movies than than uh yeah die hard and iron man 3 but yeah mm -hmm. um that's uh what movie did you just say uh shazam and uh gremlins yeah i didn't even know that took place around christmas time but also like this goes for every holiday right no. like in independence day the movie is not an independence day movie no not at all <laughs> <laughs> it just i mean in the story it just happened that it happened on the same day there's only there's yeah there's only one scene where where he even mentions yeah like yeah, Independence Day will no longer be an American holiday. It will be a Earth holiday. Yeah, makes so. sense. All, yeah. It, it doesn't take much work either. You could like if the aliens occupied Earth for any right. set amount of time, and then you were at a position to declare independence from alien invasions, then you can be an Independence Day movie. But you can't just you can't just name your movie after a holiday and be like it's one of these. And you can't just say there's Jingle Bells, by the way, and Die Hard's a Christmas action movie. You need to incorporate themes. And I think this movie did that very well. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just going back to uh, Iron Man 3 briefly. Yeah. I think actually the um, the guy who wrote the screenplay for that, um, I think if you go back and you look at all of his other movies that he's written the screenplay for that's a thing that he does is he just sets all of his movies during christmas i think he also wrote the screenplay for a uh, lethal weapon which also takes place during christmas the, the first one um yeah so again yeah that's just that's just something he does but yeah, I'm, yeah. they they try <laughs> easter movies they're like it's peter rabbit the fame will have like every everyone's trying to get in on the sweet sweet we're going to be the holiday movie 
And right, right. Yeah, yeah. There aren't as many Easter movies. Yeah. Uh, no competition. That, um, one's, they that got, one's a little harder, harder to pull off, but yeah. Um, I, I, I know Iron Man 3 was directed by Shane Black, who Shane directed Black, yeah. The mm-hmm. Predator, which was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And he <laughs> was the guy who was in the original Predator, who played a character that I just found out was supposed to be funny. And um, he just says sex jokes in the movie. Mm-hmm. And I thought, and I was, you know, the other characters were like, shut up, you're annoying. And I agreed with them. And I thought the point is this is an annoying guy. But they, they're they like, you, we're going to bring that humor to the new Predator movie. And mm-hmm. I uh, I really did not like, uh, did you see uh, Predator in Christmas? It was probably during Christmas time, I bet. Oh, right. it was Halloween, actually. <laughs> it was all the, the oh, yeah, he did Halloween. he did Halloween for the Predator one. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I, I, I haven't seen any of the Predator movies. Yeah, no, it's, uh, oh. it's a real gap, gap in my movie knowledge. But uh, oh, you, you only need to see the first one. That's okay, that's the it. first one. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be a, a classic. Yeah, they just uh, released Prey, which is supposed to be in this, but it doesn't oh, yeah. really. They really mm-hmm. didn't really go into any depth on what that world would be like. Um, right, right. Okay, well, yeah. So you know, we're gonna try to we've stay on thoughts- the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've made our thoughts clear about about what we think about classifying Christmas movies in general. So yeah, so so yeah, let's get back to Violent Night. Um, so so yeah, this movie is directed by Tommy Wercola, who um is a uh, Nor- uh Norwegian uh, uh and I'm not really familiar with his work, although he did make that movie hansel and gretel witch hunters which which i've i've heard of that's that's i watched that one of his uh past movies yeah is that is that good it's not good but i i uh i watch it because i like monster hunter stuff and it's like oh after they survive this attack you know they grew up doing monster hunters and it's it's a fun idea i just didn't really do it good okay okay yeah yeah so, uh, besides David Harbour in his star-making role as Santa Claus here, uh, we also have uh, John Leguizamo playing the main the main villain of this movie, uh, a guy who refers to himself as Scrooge throughout the movie because he hates Christmas. Um, Wait, and then, know, the uh, Grinch would have been a yeah, because he Grinch, the Grinch Christmas. actively took away from Christmas. That's right. So. yeah yeah so so that might have been more accurate although yeah yeah one of his henchmen uh goes by the name krampus which mm. is um which is like a christmas a christmas demon right <laughs> uh, yeah, so. yeah they make krampus movies like once every four years yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i haven't i haven't seen any of those but um, there um uh, there's one that i guess is liked i didn't really like it that much um it's like well done and there's nothing wrong with it i just don't like it and then there's another one that i guess it, that it's more like i actively don't like that one but they're called mm-hmm. the same thing they're just called krampus so there's no i was trying to find the one that people liked and i was just watching this like weird it's one of those horror movies that has to start with you know uh you know a makeout scene for like five minutes and i'm like i don't know you just start right, the movie right. you don't need to get my attention yeah yeah <laughs> it's like oh now i'll watch it i didn't i didn't know this was gonna be a a mature christmas movie right oh yeah a little something for for uh, daddy huh? oh maybe i'll uh put on my watching glasses now <laughs> turn the volume all the way down because there's no justifying the noises that are coming out of my tv uh yeah <laughs> um so i'll just mention I mean, there's there, there's a number of actors in this movie. I'll I'll just mention some others that that we may already know. Uh, yeah, Edie Patterson is in this movie, who um, you might know from that show, the uh, the Righteous Gemstones, and she more or less is playing the exact same character in this movie that she plays in that show. She plays an obnox- an obnoxious uh, daughter of a of a rich guy in that show and 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 in this movie she's playing the obnoxious daughter of a of a rich woman uh who's trying to get her money 
Um, oh, is that that's the um, that's the woman that's married to like a wannabe movie star or something? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that character. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, as the as the mother of the family. Yeah. So so basically, this is about Santa Claus fighting off um, a bunch of people that are trying to rob a wealthy family, and the mother, the the matriarch of the family, is played by Beverly D'Angelo, uh, who you may know as the the wife from the National Lampoon Vacation movies, including Christmas Vacation, and so I think that's uh, I think that's probably one of the main reasons why that actress in particular was was cast here to, mm. to make a reference only, to, to that. Movie. I only saw the uh, the first Vacation movie. I didn't. I thought I thought it was. Oh. Is that the they're going to Wally World? That's right. That's right. Oh, Very you, weird you, movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This it is a weird movie. You you you've never seen a Christmas Vacation. No, I saw. I, um, I just saw yeah. Vacation mm-hmm. like two years ago, and uh-huh. I yeah. I did not like it. I thought it mm-hmm. like there's, there's a point where they go to like their poor fam like their poor relatives' house and they just make fun of them the whole time. I'm like, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Randy Quaid's character. Yeah, um, yeah, like the, yeah. The like, Vacation movie. What's that? Uh, just there's a guy who's like, you know, I'm sorry, things are times are kind of rough. Can you like get do you have any money you can help? And like the joke is the guy's like, oh, if you need money, and I'm like, that's I mean, I'm the poor guy, I'm not the rich guy. <laughs> I can't relate to right. someone asking me for money and me being like, I guess. Isn't that sure. annoying, folks, when people ask you for money? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's uh that's an interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. Cousin Eddie, uh yeah, he's he's maybe a more sympathetic character than uh people give them credit for um but yeah the 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 uh vacation movies are interesting because yeah there's there's the original vacation movie there's european vacation and there's christmas vacation and and i and then there's uh vegas vacation okay yeah i think that's the last one and in every one of the movies different different actors play their kids so uh, so it's the yeah. same is are they they're the same characters chevy, yeah oh yeah 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 they're the same characters so yeah uh chevy chase and beverly d'angelo are are in all of the movies and they play the, the the same characters and then they have a son and a daughter who are played by different actors in every one of the the movies uh mm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. do they yeah. make jokes about it they're like no they don't no uh yeah the level of humor in the movies is not is not that high to to make those sorts of i i, I mean i i don't know i i think the movies are okay so um the uh, christmas vacation i that's probably the best one mm. of the series but uh yeah and i know a lot of people love those movies i don't I, i'm not as as big a fan of them as yeah other people but you know mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, Violent Night. So so yeah, this is a movie about basically um, we 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 sort of begin uh, the main narrative with a with a husband and wife who are estranged from each other, but they're getting together for Christmas and they're um, and they 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 have a daughter, a, a adorable little girl who has just watched. Home Alone, and that will come up again. Um, in, in one and, uh, of uh, the the best things is how that comes up again later. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely uh, agree. Um, yeah. So so basically, um, they are going to the husband's family's house, and and it turns out, yeah, that the husband comes from this uh, ridiculously wealthy family, um, but it's not it's not a totally good thing because the family is also incredibly dysfunctional they all hate each other and they're all basically just trying to kiss up to the to the mother who um who is uh you know emotionally abusive in in many ways and uh and they want to try and get the get the wealth from her and so um so yeah that's basically the kind of setup of that part of the story but the other part of the story is that we see santa claus who is uh taking a break during christmas night he's he's at a he's at a bar in england uh having a couple drinks he's getting pretty drunk and he's uh projectile vomiting from his 
from his uh, sleigh uh, as he's as he's driving away. And so basically these two different storylines will will come together. And that's basically what this story is about. Yeah. Which I watching it, I really liked how there was a lot of like internal logic, especially where it's like, you know, because one of these is like, why is he like staying here for this? And there is like justification for why he's like stuck here. And right. then also, you know, the um the bad Santa, you know, it it they could have easily mm-hmm. been, you know, he's just like, ah, I'm drunk and I'm but like even in his intro at the bar, he is like he, d- he still says like thank you and stuff. So it is like um you can there's like depth to him, which uh, I feel like a lot mm-hmm. of other movies would just have him go, What if Santa, you know, everyone remembers that hit Sarah Silverman show about Santa Claus? Mm-hmm. And um did you did you hear about that with Seth Rogan and Sarah Silverman? Oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Santa, Whatever. Santa Inc. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know that's like what if he, you know, he's like a jerk, but he's like he's just mm-hmm. drunk right now. But you can still tell, right. like even in that injury, he's like a good person. Um, right. right. I, I like little touches mm-hmm. like that. Oh yeah, and yeah. then he vomits on someone. Uh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You know, I was thinking it's like um, you know that uh, that uh, little girl uh you know she still believes in santa and that's uh that's part of part of what um what helps the engine of this plot it's like as she's talking to santa she gets him to believe in himself again which like, you know yeah. well executed because normally i'd be like shut up but it's yeah. actually like <laughs> <laughs> well, they're like, yeah good because because it, it, it's also you know what it is it's a good magic system that right. like so it's like oh in the beginning he's having a tough time because he's lost faith in himself so right oh well yeah yeah and uh speaking of the magic system yeah so so i i i imagine this is maybe one part of the movie that you didn't like is that Santa just says it's Christmas magic i don't really understand how it works they never make any attempt to explain how the magic works in this movie. So I'll tell you why there... <laughs> that doesn't bug me as much as it normally should, because yeah, it yeah. has the implications of a Santa Claus type system. Right. The Claus, the Santa the Claus. Claus. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So, cause I'm like, cause the, when we see glimpses of a past life, so mm-hmm. he says yeah. he doesn't know how it works. So I've inferred already that he's inherited mm-hmm. a title right right um they're they 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 managed to maneuver a very narrow arbitrary line in my brain to where that didn't upset me Mm -hmm. okay okay well that's good that's good well yeah yeah so yeah since you bring up the background of the santa claus in this movie yeah i thought that was an interesting aspect of the movie and especially having watched a lot of other movies about Santa Claus, because yeah, the lore surrounding Santa Claus differs from movie to movie. Yeah. I just recently watched. Yeah. Uh, Fred Claus. Uh, have you, have you, have, have you seen that movie? I did, but I, I yeah. can only remember like a couple of scenes. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say it's maybe just a sort of average uh, movie, uh, but What's interesting about it is that the mythos behind uh, Santa Claus in that movie, who's played by uh, Paul Giamatti, um, is much more about, oh, yeah, he was always a really good boy. He, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's how he became Saint Nicholas. And it really emphasizes the saintly aspect of who Santa Claus is. Whereas in this movie, uh, we find out that, yeah, Santa Claus actually was originally this like, uh brutal viking warrior uh basically basically like thor or something yeah in his his previous life yeah (laughs) the implication i got was that this is some sort of divine like like work like a trial he's been given in like repentance or something Mm -hmm. so those those are the yeah because he's like i don't know how it works and i'm because i i almost thought too like oh is this is this just dark fret uh santa claus and someone else right, will right. inherit it like we're so that kind of also that setup did keep me suspenseful too because i was like if we're talking the santa claus here then this guy mm-hmm. can um what's a christmas pun for like dying um getting swallowed up by the tinsel um 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the best i can come up with off the top of it my was head. something and that's <laughs> we'll we'll try to get on christmas puns but uh yeah so st okay. stuff like that um that's well you know I, oddly I, yeah, I, saying, mm -hmm. I was i was trailing speak, 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 speaking of christmas puns i mean even just the title of this movie violent night i don't know if they're the first people to to use that but if they are it's like wow i mean that was just that was just sitting there you know yeah and it's amazing they finally hit upon that. Yeah, I know. I've never heard that. Which uh, there's oh, a no. thing called woolyisms. Uh, it's a trope of if you've heard. It's where um you have to like. It's like this art of translating the essence of a joke or a pun into another language. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. So that's <laughs> you know you'll see in movies. Uh, for example, if they reference a celebrity in America in this movie when they get it when they have like um people to sub or dub over it they'll include a reference to that country celebrity that's the equivalent of it right okay and then yeah. um yeah. like when uh when in the hulk where he says uh you won't like me when i'm and he's like he's trying to translate so he says hungry um you won't like me when i'm angry <laughs> so like in other languages they're like okay this is a bilingual joke where one ver where he's mystery so like it, it's like this whole process it's really interesting and i saw that they had to do that for violent night because that's an english uh -huh. play on how it sounds it rhymes with silent so oh yeah, yeah. i yeah, saw that, that for this to translate yeah I'm, I'll, I'll see if i can pull up the list while we talk but i i did see that for okay. spanish it's a different title because they they're right, trying to capture right. the essence of of that pun uh-huh uh-huh that's interesting okay good good um okay yeah so yeah i mean basically it's 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 interesting because we never get any explanation yeah for how this guy um became santa claus yeah it's just he used to be this brutal uh viking warrior and now he's santa claus now he's saying yeah um yeah, which I, I was like i was invested in that you know they show you like a, a little flashback and that's when i was like oh this is going to be way cooler than i thought it was going to be oh yeah and i am you know it's not it's not a criticism i was just like oh, i would have liked to see more but that like that's how like i was like this is an interesting take right definitely definitely yeah um yeah so basically yeah the main the main plot of this movie is that yeah santa claus comes down the chimney to these wealthy people's house on Christmas night. And it's right while they are being robbed by this incredibly uh, well-coordinated, well-orchestrated group of criminals who were, who were trying to steal uh, this family's uh, immense fortune. And yeah. And at one point, one of the criminals like shoots off their gun and that scares off the reindeer and the sleigh. And so that, so the reindeer fly away. And so Santa is stuck here in this house uh, with these violent criminals. And so this is basically uh, the rest of the movie. Santa helps uh, this family uh, fight off these criminals. And so, yeah, as you, as you mentioned before, yeah, there are definitely elements of Die Hard in here where yeah it's like this guy is trapped in this place and for a lot of the movie the criminals don't even know that this guy is there uh and so i did appreciate yeah how this movie was trying to sort of yeah as we talked about comment upon how oh yeah people say that die hard is a christmas movie well no w no we're gonna actually make an explicitly christmas movie <laughs> that follows the plot of die hard so yeah i thought that was a clever uh Thing that Which, this that this movie is doing yeah yeah and there's a scene of someone who has their shoes removed stepping over a bunch of broken glass i'm like that has to be a direct um right reference. Yeah. also i like like internal logic like the fact that it's like the reindeer like flee and it's like and he's drunk and it's like a lot of specific things right. happen because it, yeah. one of the things is just like why is he picking this house to like fight crime at essentially and it's right. well he didn't want to do this and in fact he tried to leave um right right, right. so because mm -hmm. you know there's like oh it's this rich rich house being like invaded and so it's mm -hmm. like santa's gonna help we didn't want to help but he also right. doesn't want to do anything anymore he's kind of he's over being santa so 
right, right. Strike, which also they bring up how that family made money. I'm like, that's are we, where, how far in depth are we going to go here? Because that's uh, they go into well, they, you know they, the kind of stuff that's responsible mm-hmm. for our issues now, you know, right. with money. He's like, $70 million just disappears into the war machine of America. And it's like, yeah, that happens constantly. You know, it's, it was also like, is this one of those movies where they're like, I'm just going to sneak in, you know, letting the pub, just reminding the public that like bad stuff is happening in our government. Um, right. I'm like, well, I, don't, yeah. I, can't, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine they're going to deal with like the, the ramifications of that, but. Yeah. And that's, that's another interesting thing about this movie is yeah, that, the 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 family the that are victims of these of these criminals um with with a few exceptions this family is not especially sympathetic um and there is an argument to be made uh of whether or not certain members of this family maybe should have should have been killed <laughs> along with other people uh, throughout this movie uh and yet yeah uh all of the members of this family uh do survive to the end of the movie yeah it's well it's, some it's... don't that's that should be okay well uh yeah okay one technically doesn't uh yeah okay yeah 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 you're right about that yeah <laughs> uh, so if, if you're like you know what's gonna uh, keep your the audience's suspension up uh, right one of them does just straight up but i because I, I was yeah weird and, and and the uh-huh no yeah. fi- finish I I I, I I I i was just gonna say and 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 the guy that doesn't survive is actually maybe one of the more sympathetic yeah <laughs> people. He's, he's, he's by by far he's not even close to the most hateful member of the family so yeah yeah, yeah. in fact one of the the worst ones not yeah. not even a hint of like repercussions right. for her yeah. no not at all uh, no. yeah which yeah just that this movie will it bring the 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 premise is it's this rich family that has gained money through very shady, morally unethical things that are mm-hmm. very real and are causing issues in our life right now. And he will not address those issues, but that is the premise of it. Um, but don't yeah. expect them to really go in depth on any of that. Uh, right. No. Yeah. Not yeah definitely point. not. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. not really the, the focus of the movie. Yeah. The focus of the movie. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it, I mean, the sort of, yeah, as you mentioned, sort of surprising, sweet, sentimental part of this movie has to do with the with the young daughter. And um, early on in the movie, um, yeah, her her uh, her dad gives her a, a walkie talkie and he says that that you can you can communicate with with Santa through this and you can tell Santa what you want. And it turns out that, yeah, later on, she actually can communicate with Santa through that because uh, the criminals have uh, shut down all of the phone lines and everything in the uh, in this big family compound, and so the only the only uh, communications are walkie talkies, and and the girl is able to actually talk talk with Santa, and and that was another sort of connection to Die Hard a little bit. I mean, the the relationship that the girl has to Santa, where they're where they're talking to each other, it's kind of like. Um, Bruce Willis uh, talking to um, Reginald Vell Johnson, uh, aka the the father from Family Matters, uh, who uh, who is Shot his again. only li- link to the to the outside world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, this is the best. You know, a lot of movies they want to have kid sidekicks, and this mm-hmm. is the one that probably makes the most sense in the entire world sure. because it's Santa Claus. And the power of Christmas spirit is a real thing. So like a right, child right. is like the best possible sidekick he could get. Um, Absolutely. We'll Absolutely, talk about this yeah. when we do our big Christmas movie thing, but no Christmas movie has managed. This like kind of goes into some of like the Christmas logic of movies. But one of them that has never been addressed is the fact that parents don't believe in Santa Claus, even mm-hmm. though he's real in this universe, which means. Right. Santa- exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know which means they see gifts magically appear and they're like that's just the way things are we we yeah. still go shopping but some gifts do pop up he's not real though right exactly yeah 
yeah i mean that is that is a big hole yeah i mean not just in this movie but yeah in a lot of other movies like the uh the uh, santa claus etc where it's like well yeah no santa claus is still really going from house to house and leaving presents and <laughs> yeah uh do do parents just not notice that uh yeah only the only the uh, kids notice that i mean uh, i i mean there there maybe is a way that you could explain that i mean this movie to a certain extent, at least goes to the trouble of explaining, no, Santa Claus only leaves presents for the nice kids who still believe in him. Uh, you, Santa to, Claus, be, so, to, to be fair, I did not deserve any Christmas gifts my entire life. I, so, <laughs> I mean, you know, we're talking best behavior the two weeks before Christmas tops. But like, if, right. when, if you have a whole year, no way am I mm-hmm. making it. So, and I don't, I don't think anyone would. Yeah. It's hard to know if, if many kids would, would meet whatever standards are set for, for being truly nice. Yeah. Now okay. counterpoint, if I grow up knowing that gifts do appear, if you're nice the whole year and I now right. have a child, I'm going to be like, just so you know, like this will happen. You will get gifts. So just right. be not good. And like, we're going to keep track of this monthly, by the way, we're talking January, February, because we'll get we can like live off this this is like a, mm-hmm. this this we can shatter the economy wish for gold and bitcoin and <laughs> so i i will be impressed the day i see a movie address that that core concept of christmas movies that you have to you have to i don't hold it against the movie for not trying to answer sure. and it's like it's rough yeah. but if something does yeah. it will win a very limited mythophiles five star <laughs> yeah so get on that hollywood <laughs> so now that now that you See, know you the can, states yeah connect all these dots <laughs> fill in all these all these plot holes of the of the santa claus mythos right yeah uh, um yeah. but yeah that that's so that that's that's the setup of the movie I th- that's all the background right. we're i think mm-hmm. now we can kind of just go fully in depth into everything okay Unless okay so yeah any uh, harder but before we before do, we do that, uh, yeah, I think we've got some got some comments, right? Uh, this is from Ascendant Stoic uh, mm-hmm. from our Island of Doctor Moreau episode. Uh, funny that you mentioned the whole reverting back thing. It occurred to me now that a big part of the premise for the movie Zootopia is actually inspired mm-hmm. by the Island of Doctor Moreau. I I think this is a really good. It's essentially, yeah, because they're, they're reverting more animalistic um yeah that is that is a connection yeah mm-hmm. like to how predators are reverting back to feral state and the theme of resisting your nature and not judging others merely by their outward appearance although the case of that reversion in zootopia is a little different than dr moreau but right that is yeah. I, I yeah that's a it's a fun concept to think that zootopia is pro- the best adaption of the island of dr moreau right yeah yeah i think so yeah no that's a sharp uh sharp connection uh ascendant stoic and yeah your observation um totally fits with your uh very erudite uh handle as well i like that yeah yeah so that's you know leave a comment below we're also on discord and it's mostly just talking and hanging out but we're on instagram and all uh mm-hmm. links below mm-hmm. Join the Discord. I'm I I just really I just talk you get the game awards, by the way. Is that my Oscars? So during that I was just on there the whole time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Did you watch the game awards? No, no, I didn't. It's fantastic. It's like like they game I didn't watch any of the awards. I don't care about that. But like uh it's just game trailers. <laughs> right. They're like okay. game yeah, 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 yeah. I was I was curious if they had like celebrity um presenters or anything like that if that was i think they had like robert de niro and he was very much like uh you know my my kids play video games you know i uh my uh my uh grandkids uh (laughs) they like this crap i guess uh yeah really i don't know (laughs) you really get the sense He, he doesn't he's like his he was like given the offer and his kids were like please can you do it it'll be awesome right but yeah, uh, Idris yeah. Elba will be in the next Cyberpunk DLC. If you didn't know, okay. Cyberpunk has Keanu Reeves in it, and then it's going to have Idris Elba play one of the main characters. Okay. 
Yeah. That's exciting. These yeah. are the kinds of, this is all I talk about in the Discord. But anyway, we're going to go back to the movie now. Um, that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's probably why I stay away from the Discord. Uh, <laughs> I can't really hang with that kind of content, but I do enjoy hearing about it from Cody. So, which know, I tell so him, I get every. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, yeah, it's also like some, you know, people, um, they're like, oh, this new like animation anime for Dragon Age, it's a video game came out, and they're like, I didn't uh -huh. really like it that much. I'm like, oh, awesome. As soon as someone mentions they don't like something that I kind of don't like, I jump on board for that. I love uh, I those. Uh, you know, I, I try not to be too insulting, but I'm like, oh, you don't like it? Cool. We can actually talk about this now. Uh, <laughs> that's not what I'm looking that's, for. It's a great way to relate to people. <laughs> things that you both hate. Yeah. Uh, you have to know what you don't want to be. That's right. Anyway, which speaking of whatever, you know, the fight scenes, by the way, surprise, I actually looked away twice watching this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, for people that uh, are curious, uh, yes, this movie lives up to its title. Uh, this is a very violent movie. Um, most of the violence is pretty cartoonish and over the top, but yeah, there are a couple of moments in here where it's, uh, they, there was a, there's actually one moment in this movie involving a nail that I'm still like, oh, yeah, that had, <laughs> that had a huge reaction from the crowd in the theater. Was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of when you like, oh, we're going to, we're going to play. That's when it's like, oh, we're going to do this, but like, we're going to do right. home alone. But if it was like, if they suffer the consequences. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that, that, that was another sort of brilliant yeah, reference to another Christmas movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It sets up that the girl has seen home alone early on in the movie. And then later on, yeah, she actually escapes to a, to a place in the house where she can set some traps for the, for the uh, criminals and, and the criminals, fall into the traps and yeah the consequences yeah as as you said are are much more realistic than they were in home alone <laughs> it's like yeah no this this would actually be much more uh violent and unpleasant um yeah, yeah. one of the uh the fun <laughs> videos for home alone is there's you'll have like you know doctors react to type videos yeah. there's like a couple where they just they'll just go through they'll pause after every you know trap he set and he would just they would like walk you through like all right so his femur bone would have been broken he would right. have died here and he's just walking right. you through all that and uh mm -hmm. and now it's made real and i would i would sure. say probably one of the highlights of this entire movie. like i would like you have to watch it because like this is like a a brilliant scene of making that a real thing oh, also definitely. involving a definitely. chimney uh, and and the internal logic of a chimney that Santa can yeah. climb up and exploring that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. that was like uh it in the consequences of the chimney scene. I was like brilliant. Uh, that that right. is that is art, and I mm -hmm. you, you have you're a perfect film now. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the the action scenes, I mean, the yeah, they're they're for the most part uh, satisfying. I think they they might get they might get a bit repetitive at times, but um, yeah, I would I would say for the most part, yeah, there's there's a good sort of payoff of yeah, oh yeah, Santa Claus is gonna kick some ass now, and 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 you do really see that, and yeah, it's it's uh, it's definitely entertaining, yeah. I, I will say, you know, this isn't, it wasn't an issue now, mm -hmm. but I am now, I have, I have burnt out my last bit of tolerance for an action scene set to a Christmas movie song. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I get it, you know, juxtaposition, but I am now officially, I saw the last example that I ever really want to see again. And mm -hmm. the, you got to do, you got to play like a rock song that incorporates Christmas music or something uh, for fight scenes. Right. No, yeah. I, I, I'm, o I'm over it now. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, didn't happen this time, but the next time I'm going to be like, you got to do something else. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, uh, that's the fight scenes. That's when you, you should get like a, cause he's fighting and he's not like good at it, but then he has like, some sort of super strength and he's like you know don't make me do this and you get like a right. 
that's when he, the first time you get a flashback, which is just him in Viking armor in a ruined village, which I just saw the Northmen. So now I know what he does. And uh, uh-huh. <laughs> so he did that. He did the Northmen to the, and then it just cuts away to him. And then it's like, that's where, you know, cause he's like, I don't want to fight. So it's like, did he take some sort of vow of like, I'm going to be a pacifist. Is this his like, right. Uh, his, his, you know how uh, Judas is a superhero in DC uh i'm not i'm not familiar with that character no no judas uh, he, judas from from uh the bible yeah you're not familiar you're, no. from, you're you know judas he uh in, yeah, in, i know in, i know the uh original judas yeah 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 well we all do but um yeah. maybe you know it's i don't know like which adaption and maybe it's not always the case but have you heard uh-huh. of the phantom stranger no, I don't know. Yeah, he's not. A, he's not a big. He pops up in Batman cartoons every now and then. But he's okay. essentially like a ghost that can help people and can punish. And it turns out he's got like a. He's got all of the pieces of silver that he was paid with to betray oh, wow. Jesus in his chest. And for every like major good deed he does for the world, one of them falls uh-huh. off. And as soon as they all fall out, he he's like free to move on. And he's called oh, the Phantom wow. Stranger because they're like because you betrayed your friend, and the world on that scale, you're go- you will forever be a stranger to those around you. So mm-hmm. no one can like know his name or anything. Uh, oh, okay. They did that with That's the question cool. too. You know the question. Yeah, the uh, question. Yeah, I. I mean, I only know the question as the character that Rorschach from Watchmen was based off of. Yeah. Uh, so mm-hmm. un, you know some version of him the mm-hmm. implication is he was a genocidal maniac who led wow. a a major thing in the in the war i, I think world war ii right. and he is his curse is he no one because he was an egomaniac no one will ever remember his face so they, mm-hmm. they yeah. like he has a face but every his curse is people see it and it just appears as a blank face uh-huh and that's the question so that's okay those were the comparisons I was going in for for Santa Claus in this film, right? Yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I can see those those comparisons. Yeah, in terms of um, yeah, Santa Claus's powers, yeah, I mean those are those are fairly ill defined. Yeah, all that we know for sure is yeah he has a certain amount of magic that yeah yeah that he basically uses. He like presses his nose or something, and that like yeah. <laughs> brings about this fairy dust that lets him go go up and down chimneys um he watching has this, this uh-huh because no, no, I, I, no, I, 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 I was just i was just going to say he has this scroll that he that that he uh has that that where, where he keeps track of all of the naughty and nice people uh yeah and uh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, was, I was hoping for a bit more uh stuff to happen with that christmas bag with his uh-huh. uh oh yeah then the the bag too yeah mm-hmm uh, I was hoping there'd be a little bit more things, but that was the only time I was like, ah, you didn't really do anything with that. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, he's, he, he uses it early on to uh, try and get some, get some weapons to, to fight a guy at one point. Um, but, uh, but yeah, other than that, yeah, there's not, there's not too much of a, not too much of a payoff with the, with the bag, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Now there is payoffs with the nose thing, which watching this, I was also oh, yeah. like, I assume that's a reference to some Christmas bit. I don't know. Because yeah. I'm not I'm not a Christmas head. I'll be honest. I don't know the lore of Santa Claus all that well. Um, right. So I was like, I assume in, I don't know, in some culture, that's how they say like, oh, yeah, he he snorts up his nose and then it or he breathes out of one nostril or whatever. And then he goes up chimneys. I assume that's right. it. I assume there's something with a hammer. Uh yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I. Or is that? Oh, that's where it, you got. That's where you were thinking Thor. I mean, then. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the thing about Santa Claus is that there's all kinds of contradictory backstories <laughs> surrounding him. I mean, he's Saint Nicholas. He's Kris Kringle. He has all of these different names and so forth. And yeah, I mean, I think that this. I think this movie has either completely made up the Viking warrior backstory or else that's probably a pretty, um, a pretty minor, uh, less talked about <laughs> backstory for Santa Claus. Yeah. Cause I think most of, 
most of the stories about Santa Claus, yeah, go back to like, yeah, St. Nick based to this kindly guy living in, um, yeah, I think, I think somewhere in like, um, yeah, Turkey or maybe Hungary, somewhere in like Eastern Europe. I think that's where parts of the Santa Claus legend come from. But, uh, yeah, it's all one of the, I, I, uh, similar to Dumb and Dumber, uh, I, which is a Christmas movie. Lloyd Christmas uh takes place at Christmas yeah <laughs> it doesn't even take it's just, the guy's name is Christmas uh oh okay okay well <laughs> there you go mm-hmm. but like how like the running joke is people think they're like assassins um oh yeah mm-hmm. uh and I I like that and in and, and I like this in this one they're like there's a guy dressed like Santa Claus running around Mm-hmm. And they're like, is this one of your elite hitman squads? Uh, right, right. Who is this man? And when they're like, they, they're interrogating him and they're like, who are you? And he starts mm-hmm. listing off like all the names. He's going to like, that's genuinely cool. And it's oh, funny yeah. because it's just, just because it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And it was cool for me knowing German that the first thing he said was Weihnachtsmann. So. Oh yeah. I don't know German. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know you knew German. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've studied it. Yeah. I, oh, I'm, I'm I'm far from fluent in it, but I could I could carry on a conversation. And, yeah. Oh, all right, stay tuned, folks. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> You're interested in that? Yeah. Uh, uh hmm. the villain has decided, uh, which it's also like because he he they kill the staff in the beginning, uh-huh. which yeah. is like they need another. To do that. That's another very morally problematic thing about this movie is that yeah, the only people that die uh in the movie i mean other than the criminals that deserve it are you know a bunch of uh totally innocent uh servants of this rich family yeah and that's just sort of brushed away it's like yeah those people die uh which i always family they they survive but yeah Mm -hmm. yeah which is like you know happy ending i don't know what it is it's kind of weird because it's also i'm assuming like well they had to kill the staff because right. otherwise, I'm not on board for them getting beaten up or and dying. It's true, the, the well, yeah, thing, yeah. And what they're and, doing and, wrong, and that's that's another thing. Going back to the Home Alone sequence in this movie, yeah, I mean it's it shows like the more disturbing aspect of of those traps that yeah they would actually seriously harm and and actually kill people. But within the context of this movie it's okay because she's doing it completely in self-defense. Uh, these people would kill her otherwise, but within the original Home Alone movie, I mean, yeah, those guys, I mean, they were trying to break into a house, but they weren't necessarily violent criminals. So, yeah. 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 They were trying to break into like a three-story mansion. That's, only, yeah, right. that's I'm like, <laughs> I'm not inherently, you gotta, yeah. So there, I, I it, like them killing the staff really felt like, well, they have to do something bad. Because I'm going to, otherwise I'm going to be booing Santa Claus. Because I'm like, they're like, we're going to steal that money that you embezzled from the government for your own personal, like, interest. And I'm like, good. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the movie has to establish stakes. It has to say, yeah, I mean, these, these criminals will do, will do anything. These criminals, yeah, at a certain point don't seem above, yeah, killing, uh, young children uh if they if they have to uh which so does place them into that category of film where the villain brings up good points and then they kill like innocent people and you're like oh well now we don't yeah, yeah. remember the joke uh, what was it yeah. uh in the batman did you watch that mm-hmm. i did yeah mm-hmm. spoilers for that film and my thoughts on it Spoiler. i guess but yeah just uh the riddler brings up a bunch of good points and that, and yeah. at the end he goes, and also I'm gonna I set up explosives all and it's like oh well now I now you're now I now he needs to stop you because right up until then he's like you know these people did these and they deserve to die and I'm like oh, yeah. yeah why is Batman stopping he's like uh, oh mm-hmm. he's gonna he's gonna blow up a, the river he's gonna blow up the dam I guess yeah right. not much of a riddle but uh, right. Doesn't not really relevant to yeah. anything he's done either, but uh, but now exactly. now yeah. now we're rooting for him to lose, uh, right, right, and once again that may be yet another callback to Die Hard in a way because yeah, mm. the villain in that movie Alan Rickman's character Hans Gruber, 
yeah at the beginning of the movie yeah you kind of feel like oh yeah this this guy has some good points yeah i mean this this guy is actually somewhat sympathetic but then yeah he uh horribly kills people uh throughout the movie and then you realize yeah no actually not yeah yeah so i i don't i don't know what the term for that is where they they give a villain like a lot of good points to make and then they're like and also i'm gonna stab a puppy and you're like well that that's an evil man uh Oh, well, well, okay. It was, it's interesting you bring that up. Yeah, I mean, that's actually referred to as, I think, uh, kicking the dog. Oh, yeah. I was close. <laughs> there's a, yeah, there's a scene yeah, that shows, oh, yeah, no, this guy's actually to- totally horrible when they, yeah, do, when they just, just completely kick a, dog. Oh, okay. yeah, kick a dog, harm some totally innocent yeah, creature. Yeah, so. Because, you know, the, they kill a whole staff of people working on Christmas Eve, which is like... Right horrible and then and then it's the rich like slimy people that are like fine and like they get threatened a couple times but they get away with a lot more than hostages normally would i feel uh oh yeah yeah totally yeah and i mean (laughs) again you know one of many times where this movie yeah kind of strains reality yeah there's there's the part where uh yeah the guy is 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 going to kill the hostages and he's and and, he, and it's really just like okay which which one first and then the hostages start getting into a shouting match with each other and the guy's like uh shut up shut up and it's like well you know if you were really a cold-blooded killer you would have shut them up by just shooting them but yeah uh yeah. which this was like the specifically the character that was the most eager to kill you right like exactly they, that was his whole characterization was like oh this is the crazy one who, yeah, this was this was uh, Krampus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I think that was the character that was codenamed Krampus. Yeah. He did have uh, also like one of uh, where where like, how he dies, which is he just gets beaten to death. He just gets yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. You know? <laughs> I I I was a fan because you know they they just like what I like about this movie is. They didn't like hit him over the head. It's for like right. a minute. They are beating and stabbing him. And it it like it felt real in the sense where they were like, oh, like we like that, you know, adrenaline went going in and they all like instinctually just went to kill. And it felt right. it felt very real. And I I, I like oh, that. Oh yeah, part. absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely yeah, a funny part. Um so yeah, I think we're I think we're ready to get into the uh, final reflections here, and unless there's any other aspects of the plot, I think we've I think we've covered most of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's the big, there's the final chimney death. The final chimney death, yeah. Um, uh, which you yeah, know, magic definitely... magic system wise, let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. Is you know they yeah. set up. That he can go through a chimney. They have people discuss the logistics of it like midway through, which you don't need to happen. But like the you know, the fact that he brings a guy in the chimney with him and his body contorts because he can't magically go and it results in a fountain right. of blood. Right. I stood up in the theater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that was definitely um yeah, a good sort of yeah, final final moment yeah and uh the the villain he brings up that like when his family lost everything suddenly santa stopped coming around you know right which the thing is because yeah because in the real world he didn't have the money but in this world Mm -hmm. santa is real and he did abandon you (laughs) so it's like you yeah he should be mad i because he just got confirmation that santa is real and it wasn't because of money santa just didn't do it right right yeah and when he and when he gets confirmation that santa is real, he's like oh well that's great then i can actually kill the real santa <laughs> and actually destroy christmas <laughs> once and for all uh which is an interesting turn so yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's like one moment where he gets like a sense of wonder when uh when he thinks it's snowing right, right. and then he's like and then he's like you are real now that yeah. means i can you know this <laughs> right it's like he did get a sense of wonder at realizing, oh, he actually can destroy Christmas. Right. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. But yeah, that 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 that's all the highlights. It's a 
uh out, mm-hmm. outside of that it's you know it's talking about fight scenes uh it's an action right. film you know it is yeah yeah the uh um, yeah it's an it's an action action comedy yeah yeah, yeah. the um i i guess the the plot besides santa finding out his christmas thing is this family that's broken apart mm-hmm. maybe they're divorced maybe they're separated and right. it's about money but then the the wife doesn't care about money but the son's mm-hmm. like okay but just it's a lot of money which i am on board i i i've never been yeah. like <laughs> i've never been more on board for being like well maybe tough it out for like a year because right. you know she, she's like you know why are you staying around with this family and it's like lady mm-hmm. we're talking about uh, hundreds of millions of dollars right right you know, if you've had to work at a job for like five years, imagine just having to deal with a bad family and then you're just right, a millionaire. Right. That's he's made the right decision. Uh, she, I guess, she already has money because I can't imagine another poor person being like, no, leave them. Uh, well, yeah, it seems like it seems like the wife is maybe just sort of you know, fairly comfortably middle class, uh, but um. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this movie does go a little bit into the sort of psychology of like, okay, yeah. Imagine that that you are from a really wealthy family, but the people are horrible, uh, and so you can you can you you stand to inherit money eventually. But in order to do that, you need to suck up to horrible people in order to do it. I mean, would you do that? Uh, and um, yeah, I think yeah. <laughs> For better or worse, I think most people would say, "Well, uh, how horrible are they?" Uh, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> if you, I mean, if you've worked a customer service job or worked any yeah. job where you have to pretend to be nice to anyone, right, right, you'd be like, mm-hmm. "I had to do that for significantly less than mm-hmm. seven hundred million dollars," which he's already right. the favorite. They establish he's the favorite, so it's already like yeah. if he was the least favorite, I would, I would get it if he was like yeah. but there's a chance and she's like it's not worth it but here he knows he knows he's right. gonna get it everyone knows yeah. the whole family yeah. comments on it that's so right I, that's right there's a time for principles and it stops mm-hmm. at like thirty thousand dollars <laughs> yeah <laughs> sounds about right yeah after that <laughs> you know you, you can <laughs> you can have principles afterwards right so that's, we, we we know your price now. So hey. <laughs> Any, anybody lot. on the anybody on the Patreon, if you want Cody to abandon his principles, just it it goes yeah. away. Donate oh. that amount of money. Yeah, Is that yeah. ten thousand? I'm that's the thing. At ten thousand, I'm tempted. Right, right. Thirty thousand is like there's no more. There's no debate. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, people talk about having. Would you do this for a million dollars? It's the answer is usually yes. <laughs> right. Well, well, the answer is usually, well, you don't actually have a million dollars, so that's a that's a pointless question. Yeah. Uh, so, in, in my <laughs> in my opinion, when people, that that saying you wouldn't do something for a million dollars means nothing because you don't really think you're getting that million dollars. Exactly. exactly. It changes a lot when someone puts down a briefcase and says, you know. Right saw your own leg off and it becomes like <laughs> you know for a yeah. million dollars yeah yeah i can buy a new leg which i don't even need i don't do much anyway so <laughs> it's just um, i don't know where you are on principles but well yeah i mean the problem with sawing off your own leg or something like that for a million dollars is like i mean with the healthcare system <laughs> as it's in this country it's like well, yeah it might cost two million dollars to get a new leg so yeah. that's a good po- oh man imagine <laughs> the egg on my face <laughs> uh, boy am I, I they hand me the bill and i'm like oh it's something like no this is for your checkup i'm like my checkup right but what yeah. about the, the I that that's already half the money I got for selling it off. And they're like, you should have gotten insurance. Like, I yeah. don't know so, what that is. So okay, here's here 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 is the policy from now on. All right. 
whenever somebody offers you a million dollars to do something, it's like, okay, but you also have to pay for whatever, uh, you know, psychological or medical uh, <laughs> needs all I, that, that, that I will have after doing whatever the thing is. Yeah. So if you, if you, if, if you cover that too, okay. And the million dollars is just like, you know, an added bonus on top of that. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. Anything is like, so if this covers therapy right. and the hospital bills yeah, yeah. and now the only thing I have to deal with is my lack of dignity and the, right. the torment you've put me through. <laughs> it's easy money. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Final thoughts on, um, what are we talking about? Violent Night. Violent Night. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is a movie where, you know, it's what it says on the package, right? You know, I mean, <laughs> if, 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 you, if you see that poster, uh, this movie is exactly what you think it's going to be. Uh, it's David Harbour as Santa Claus kicking ass. Um, and it's very entertaining for that. Um yeah, is this a movie that's going to uh, become a holiday classic? I, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say. I mean, there are so many Christmas movies at this point. Um, I think it has uh, a somewhat good uh, a good chance of doing that. I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of laughs in here, uh, but yeah, I think the highlight is 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 David Harbour's performance as this very specific kind of santa claus and uh for that reason i think this movie is is worth seeing if you like a good violent action comedy that's like a good point for any movie that wants to be like this holiday movie right. is will this fit into someone's rotation when right. when, it, when it comes to christmas time you know like the grinch that's in my mm -hmm. rotation jingle all the way is mm -hmm. in my rotation would this make yeah. it into my rotation Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I think it would, but it would not be high up there. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if it if it's if it quite rises to that level of of being a movie that I would watch every year. But um, every 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 couple of years, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah it's like oh, Violent Night. Did you see that? That was hilarious. That was awesome. You should oh, check yeah, it. Yeah, this is good. a movie yeah. to show people that haven't heard about this movie. Also, yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. This is I I this is the perfect movie for you're getting you're drinking so much water with your family on Christmas and you're like mm -hmm. you guys have to check out this movie and they're like what's it about you like, shut up just one time just shut up <laughs> oh my god and, and they're like why do you why do you talk so abusively to us <laughs> <laughs> like, because it's Christmas. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, for an action, let's, let's talk about this specifically for a Christmas uh -huh. action film. This oh, is yeah. the best one that I'm aware of. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. That's a very specific genre and there's not, there's not many of them. Yeah. yeah there's Christmas horror, you know, those pop up every now and then there, I mean, they're doing, they're doing yeah. the Grinch. They're doing horror Grinch. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. have you seen that? Mm -hmm. The trailers for that? Uh -huh. No. Uh, yeah, I saw a, I, I, I saw a still from it, but yeah, yeah, no, I haven't seen the trailers. Yeah, it's by the people that made um, Terrifier, which is, mm -hmm. or at least it's starring the guy from it, and it is genuinely one of the most gruesome horror films that I've ever. I haven't seen the movie. I saw clips of it, and I uh -huh. have sat. I, there are dark fantasy storylines out there that are so graphic I can't describe them out loud, and this mm -hmm. Terrifier uh disgusted me on a level that was so primal i was like i can't watch this movie um right, right. so they're making yeah I, yeah i mean I, I mean i don't really do horror normally and i mean combining horror with christmas um yeah that just that that bothers me on a very uh on a very primal level um i mean I I'm, I'm cool with like a, you know, an over the top violent, you know, action comedy like this with Christmas, but you know, the more kind of dark horror stuff when Christmas. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't work for me. No. Yeah. I mean, we can have Halloween on Christmas if you want, 
Right. But you know, I I you know, the Nightmare Before Christmas, that's a Halloween movie. Oh yeah. Well 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 yeah, I mean I mean that's a that's a that's a good uh example of yeah, I mean it can be Halloween or Christmas, but that's a very a very lighthearted uh movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's usually their uh, horror Christmas. It's very, ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna strangle this person with tinsel, and, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, anything with anything with uh, Tim Burton. Yeah, I mean, I think he, I think he does Christmas well uh, with a sort of you know, slight gothic sensibility or something. Although Tim, I, I, I will hasten to add. Tim Burton did not direct that movie. Uh, we should give give credit credit where it's due, but uh, that's but, that's but, one but of the it, greatest what, tragedies. Yeah, it's, it's people it's, like it's a Tim Burton movie, and there was like I was like that was all uh, that was me. I did that. Right, right. I, I that was my like uh, vision. Yeah, yeah, and that's but, like uh, the, when people think of Tim Burton, you think the Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas. Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> Which, which also at least partially takes place during Christmas, um, I believe. But whether or not it's a Christmas movie, who yeah. knows? Well, and, uh, and, and folks, if you're like, how deep can they go into Christmas movie talks? We're going to have the big Christmas oh, uh, yeah. talk. We're going we're gonna to do a Christmas. We're going to talk about movies that we like on Christmas. So yeah. comment mm-hmm. below your Christmas movies. And if I already watch them, I'll act like I, I watch it on your recommendation. Mm-hmm. Will says, uh, check out. Fred Claus. Mm-hmm. Fred Claus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you've, if you've already gone through about 20 or so Christmas movies. Um, yeah. Check that one out. After Christmas that. specials of shows, Futurama, mm-hmm. the Christmas robot. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, played by John Goodman. Yeah, that's a classic. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Simpsons, Simpsons Christmas episodes. There's a lot of great ones of those. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Simpsons Christmas episodes are just sad. Was it? You know, you forget how just sad The Simpsons was. It wasn't like a comedy. It was just like a family drama. Well, yeah the the uh, the uh, very first Christmas episode, which is also like the very first episode of The Simpsons, uh, period. Um, yeah, it's all about how they don't have enough money, <laughs> um, and that was that that was something that was definitely part of the Simpsons show early on that was very quickly abandoned. Well, not quickly, but it, it was gradually abandoned uh, as the seasons went on. It's like, Oh no, no, the Simpsons somehow just have enough money to do everything. But in the, in the early seasons, yeah, it was like, no, no, they, they, they really have to figure out how to make the money stretch and, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then after the, the episodes are like Bart gets caught shoplifting his mom, like gives up on him. Right. Marge gets a lot of credit for being a good mom. She's not a good mom. And uh, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. there's the other way like, Bart burns down all the Christmas gifts. And then. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, just, then, and then, no and then wacky. Marge goes on Jeopardy to, to try and <laughs> get the money back. Yeah, it's a crazy episode. Yeah. <laughs> they just lose. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So, and that, folks, imagine two hours of just this. That's what you're going to be in store for next week. That's right. Hey, <laughs> it's going to be a marathon. Yeah. <laughs> As I, you know, we we should start doing this. We're, we're mm-hmm. the book episodes coming up. Um, right. We have Kindred is going to be the next book episode. Uh, that that the okay. special for that just came out. Uh, I saw one trailer, and it didn't imply any of the things I've seen so far in the book. I'm almost done with it, but. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm wondering if certain things are going to be tackled. Uh, okay, interesting. Yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll have to do a side by side comparison to see you know, how the adaptation. I, I do like when you go through a book, just being like, "What's going to be adapted?" Uh, it's it's uh, there's a lot of like if you read manga too, uh, and you watch an anime, like you can read manga and be like, "They're not adapting that," and then in books right. you'd be like, "No way is this scene going to happen." Uh, mm-hmm. So we'll uh, we'll mm-hmm. see if we can get a guessing game going. And uh, sure. after that, going back to fantasy yeah. for a bit is going to be unsold by Will Wright. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah. I already I finished that one. I think Duncan still got some time on it, but 
Now you folks yeah. also have more than the week that we give ourselves to read entire books. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the, that's their schedule going forward. So more Christmas talk next week. Then Kindred by Octavia Butler then Unsold by Will Ray. So there you go. And, uh, Get get ready to hear the only joke you can make on unsold, which is I'm unsold on this. If you don't like it, um, <laughs> stay tuned for how we end up using that bit of wordplay. I um, hope that you don't kin dread yeah. about that book. All right, all right, just knock it out of the park, Duncan. What's our outro? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, if you hear some uh, some some steps. On your rooftop, um, get out your gun. <laughs> Home runs. All day. <laughs> <laughs>